Hi everybody, my name's Jason. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for being part of our family, and um, we have a tremendous amount of amazing family out there, and we love and cherish all of you guys, and we thank you guys very, very much for being part of our clan, being part of our world here, reading with us. Um, there's a lot of you guys um, that are in a, a little little Telegram group that we have that, you know, I just, I really, really love all of you guys, and we really, really appreciate all of you, and um, this is crazy, I just thought I'd show you guys this picture, this is, um, I guess if you were in North America, this would be what a uh, Costco would look like, this is what a, co it's the equivalent of a Costco, it's about the only, or Sam's Club, or Sam's Club uh, Miss Nicole says, and so, this is what our world is. Yesterday we went out and looking for dog food and there is nothing. There is nothing left anywhere. And um, we went side to side, various places, and there's just there's just nothing around. And so we are we're essentially in a famine. We are in uh, 40 days now, over over a little over 40 days, 42 days. Uh, 42 days, 40 days. Um, there's been no food, no gasoline, and it's, there's a, it's a, it's almost like a, um, it's a, I, I don't know, I, I, I guess put on the tinfoil hats, folks, but it's like a new world order, cons uh, agenda, um, just like, uh, Hawaii, just like California, just like where they, um, they're essentially torching places and keeping the land. Essentially, this is what it appears to us down here that they are doing. Um, it started off somewhat organic, but now it's coming out that all these people closing the roads were actually paid by politicians. And so when we're dealing with politicians, we're dealing with the government, we're dealing with all sorts of governments. And so the people um, are about to civil war down here. They are going to be um, blowing doors very quickly. So we shall see how we fare. And um, so far, so good. And we were able to secure um, corn. And we have some bad flour, and we have some bad rice, and we have some bad lentils. And when I'm saying bad, it's only for uh, human consumption um, because there's it's beyond what humans could eat. The bugs have infiltrated them. And we have a lot of it. And so we will be hand cooking food for our dogs so that they have it. And we fed them last night this new recipe, and they seem to like it. And so we are on a roll. Um, Yah is always providing. He will always provide for you. He will provide for us. But, you know, one thing is that um, life is very, very, very fragile. It is very, very, very quick. It is very, very over a lot of times. Um, we're around now where we have seen a, well, it was a friend of ours, essentially. And um, last night we found out he was murdered and, um, and a little store that we used to, to be when we first moved down here. Um, he was, a, he was an Asian guy and no kidding. The guy had six toes on each, each foot. We, we all thought he was Nephilim, but he wasn't tall enough to be a Nephilim, but we, he didn't have six fingers, but he had six toes. So Philippe, um, was the first guy in this country that showed us how to, uh, use phones and how to do a lot of stuff. We had no idea even how to swap propane out. And this little guy helped us. And not only this, this guy from the store, was the guy that went and took us to get our very first milk cow named Ruth and her son named Samson. And so th this guy on Saturday was at a store and some guys rolled up. And because we are in, they, they closed the country down, the, the cops have completely stood down. And so we're living in a, a what I guess would we, we could consider like the wild, wild west. And it is a... Um, it is a it is crazy, and so Philippe is dead. We found that out last night, and so um, rest in peace, our buddy Philippe. And we shall see what else happens down here. But blood is flying, people are dying, and um, not only that. Uh, a couple days ago, prior to that, a, they took a bus driver that looked like a normal bus driver, and they threw rocks. They broke out all those windows. They um, grabbed him out of the bus. They tied him up. They beat him up, then they tied him up, and, um, you know, this is uh, the world we are living in. Um, s having said this, I would much rather be in this country than I would to be a tax slave in North America. 
we're still a lot more freer under these um, kind of actions than we were back in North America where you, everybody's a complete slave. And so um, that's the story for the day. All right, gentlemen, um, let's get into this real quick. I want to, to guys, there's a thousand of these books. Um, I don't know how many is left, 900 of them left, something of that sort. If you want a Yaz scriptures, you would probably want to do a pre-order for them if you want them. It's 103 books. It is a, what you call a PU um, large, it's a PU front cover. It's like, it looks like leather to me, but I guess it's not, but it's a really nice front cover. It has three bookmarks. Um, first come, first serve on all of these. We hope there'll be many more, but we do know that the order in India is placed. The paper order is on its way to our uh, printing press in India, and it is on its way out. And if you guys do not happen to have, um, well, or the funds, that, or you don't want this, please download this PDF. Put this on your devices. You never know what tomorrow will bring. You never know when we're going to lose access to things. And so if you guys, the very first download right here is Yah's Scripture, single column, 66 book. The other one, I think, is 37 books. The Apocrypha, it is the exact same print that we are going to be printing in the books, except uh, the books have uh, the double column in it. All right, gentlemen, let's talk real quick. What happened in Joshua 4? Give me a quick recap. Who, what, when, where, why, and what? So the people of Israel, they crossed over a river that had stopped up. How about everyone passing over? And uh, they all, he told uh, the 12 leaders to grab uh, each a stone. They, then they put the stones up. He said, what are, when your children ask you, what are these stones for? You say that Yahuwah brought you out of this land. Yahuwah did this for you, that he is powerful, and uh, that you don't forget him. And uh, basically, everyone, when the, when the priest stood in the water, they, uh, the water stopped, and they, everyone passed by them. They held the Ark of the Covenant. And then they went by after the after everyone had made it through, then they went through. Yep. And so Joshua, would you call Joshua a, a hero? Was he is he a is he a hero? Is he uh, just a really good leader? Is he um, I mean he's obviously Yah's chosen person. I mean he could what be do you guys look at? He could I mean, be a hero. He's not exactly young at this point. He's gotten jobs is just uh, he's he's hacking. I don't know if he'll survive this. Um, hopefully he's got gotta grab some water. Um and it's raining, guys, and so it's going to be a wild day out there with the rain. Okay. Um, Jay, did you have something for yeah, you? Yeah, I was going to say, I say you could call him a hero. He was a leader. He wasn't like Moses. He was a little different. But um, he was more of a warrior than a leader. He was definitely a fighter, so you could call him a hero. He defended his people and brought them into the land. Yeah. Without his command, they may not have done it right. They may have, you know, had somebody else, you know, and they would have, like, gone astray. Because right after Joshua leaves, you know, it doesn't take long, only a couple of years, and a... Uh, Everyone starts with idol worship. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> you guys ready? Yep. Yep. All right. Eli, don't say so much, bro. Please. Thank you. Okay. Five. And it came to be when all the sovereigns of the Amorites who were beyond the Yardine westward and all the sovereigns of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that Yahuwah had dried up the waters of the Yardine from before the children of Israel until we had passed over, that their heart melted. And there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. At that time, Yahuwah said to Yahushua, Make knives of flint for yourselves and circumcise the sons of Yisrael again the second time. Uh-oh. Here comes the knives. Here comes the... Um, so, I would have to assume that they weren't circumcising every eight days. I was ah, well, we will learn this. This is why we are studying the book of Joshua. So we will find out why it is we have to go clippity-clip. Three. So Yahushua made knives of flint for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of foreskins. Wow. Did that hill, was that hill called the hill of foreskins prior to this? Probably not. I don't think so. And this is why Yahushua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Mitzram who were males, all the men of battle, had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Mitzram. For all the people who came out had been born circumcised, had been not been born circumcised, but all the people who came out had been circumcised. But all the people who were born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Mitzrayim had not been circumcised. So that I was saying they didn't follow the command. Well, they they, they did. either didn't follow the command or mo. I mean, here they're walking with Moshe, right? I think I don't I don't know I don't know why they didn't because we do have a Torah command. Yeah, in the days of Moshe. Now, Eight Abraham, days. this was like 400 years before this. Right. So this is a very interesting 
um, thing that nobody that came out as they were traveling, so 40 years, all those kids born, nobody had been circumcised. So, thus, um, the Hill of Foreskins is here. The Hill of Foreskins. Yes. Okay. Um, six? On, yes. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all, till all the nation, the men of battle, who came out of Mitzrayim were consumed because they did not obey the voice of Yahuwah, to whom Yahuwah swore not to show them the land which Yahuwah had sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. And Yahushua circumcised their sons, whom he raised up in their place, for they were circum uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. That still, still. leads us to the question of why. Right, it's eight days old, so the baby wouldn't be able to walk anyway, so they carried. So. Yeah, but, and you know, these, these people were the complainers. You know, they were slated for death. They were marked for death. They were not going to make it out of these, these 40 years of walking around. And so maybe this is, this is a, you know, this is, the, the thing about circumcision is, is it is a covenant piece, right? It is something that when you are circumcised, you are in the covenant. You are walking in the covenant. But if you are Torah-less and you do not care about the law, statutes, and commandments, then, then circumcision is absolutely nothing because it doesn't make a bit of difference for you. Seven. Uh, who else do we got? Is it a seven? Uh, yeah, no, we are on eight. Okay. And it came to be when they had completed circumcising all the nation that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. Yeah, that would be... Yeah, uh, that would be terrible going to walk that. Yeah, that's going to be like probably 15 days before things are better, I would say going to be a while. Okay. And it came to be when they had completed the circumcising all the nation that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. I liked that so much. I thought that I'd read that twice. And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, today I have rolled away the reproach of Mitzrayim from you. So the name of this play of this of the place is called Gilgal to this day. So this is something that um, maybe gives us a clue on this entire thing because Yahuwah said to Yahushua, Today, I have rolled away the reproach of Mitzrayim from you. Right, so you're no longer, you're no longer like part of Mitzrayim. Yeah. You're like I, separated. I think that is it. I think they did this so that everybody was in covenant. That when they took this being old, you knew what this means. If you're being circumcised at eight days old, you have no idea. You don't even know about it until much later. And um, it's my dog itching. Some weird sounds. Okay. Um, where are we at, gentlemen? We are on number Love 10. It. Ten. And the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and performed the Pesach on the 14th day of the month at evening on the desert plains of Jericho. Now, why did they just do Pesach? Because that was a command. That was their Besides word. that, why would they have not done Passover before this day? Well, they did. They talked about it doing it. Well, so Moses and Moshe. well, here's the gig is what do we have? What do we know of a command about Passover? Uh, if we kill a lamb, we are... Um, and? You're missing the point. Are you saying, like, where they're supposed to do it a month later if they mm. are unclean? Nope. What, what can't you do if you're, uh, it, to oh, celebrate? Oh, yeah, sure. If that's... you are not uncircumcised, you cannot keep Passover. Right, so that that this was like a month before something they went and did this. Right, and so this is why I'm saying that these people, I don't know if these people would have, if they uh, kept Passover... Their forefathers did. Their forefathers did. But um, whether or not they did, um, we don't know. If they did, they were breaking pa they were breaking the, the covenant, the commandment of Passover, which you need to be uh, circumcised. Okay, 11. And they ate of the stored grain on the land on the morrow after the Pesach, unleavened bread and roasted grain on the same day. And the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the stored grain of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to be when Yahushua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and saw a man standing opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Yahushua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, I have come. I have now come as captain of the host of Yahuwah. And Yahushua fell on his face to the earth and did obeisance and said to him, What is Adonai saying to his servant? And the captain of the host of Yahuwah said to Yahushua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is Kodesh. And Yahushua did so. So is this like similar to the place of Moses was standing when he saw the burning bush? Or is it like a whole other place? I do not know that. I do not know that answer to this. Um, but we do know that um, our creator is a um, creator who provides. 
a creator who provides not only entities of uh, things like this, right? But also, he 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 takes care of us, and he knows our he knows our problems, he knows our our issues, and um, for the Yisraelites, he sent before them a uh, a a real warrior, right? A yeah. a messenger. And that could be Michael, right? It could be uh, it could be anybody. Yeah, captain of the host. You, we don't we don't know exactly who it was, but we do know that the uh, children of Yisrael will have uh, a good leader with them, and. Um, I guess that's it for us today, guys. Um, hopefully, you guys all out there are obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. We hope that you guys are, um, you have the faith of Messiah Yahushua. So the road that we're traveling is very, very short. We never know when our last message here in Boss Clan will ever be. We have no idea being out in these wilds, being out in this, this crazy, crazy place, what our Creator has planned for us. So there's no better time than right now to make things where we need to be. Make your soul where it should be. And if we're just existing in this planes and we don't care about our soul, then we are not, we, we're, we're, we're injuring ourselves. And so the entire prospect and the entire world that we're trying to get people to is to the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. So with that, guys, um, we love you guys very, very much. Y'all willing, you will hear from us again. Thank you so much. We are out. All right. Shalom. Shalom.